Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and I was very wrong. There is a much quicker way of making a perfectly sized tapered round base. So in a recent video I was showing a really quick way of making nameplates to go on bases, and as part of that I needed to make a perfectly sized tapered round base, and I said that I'd generally do it this way. I'd bring in a cylinder, so somewhere here, come to the bottom corner, Take this up to 256 vertices, and then to set the diameter, which I need to be 39.5, I'll just divide that by 2, and then I need to change the depth to 4. And then we've got the problem that this is not going to be tapered, so I said I'd go into face mode, Alt select those faces, delete those faces, and then click on this P and separate by selection, and then this allows me now to see the size of just this object. So if I go to item, I can see this one and this one separately, and I can down the size of this to 37 millimeters. Once you've done that, shift click them, Control and J to join them together, go into edge mode, A to select everything, Control and E, and then bridge edge loops. So we've got our base that way. Now this definitely works, so there's no problem with doing it this way, but I had a couple of comments of saying that there could be faster ways of doing this. The first one, which was commented by Neon Knight, and this is a good way of doing it as well, it definitely isn't the best way, would be to bring in a circle here. So we're gonna do the same thing of 256 vertices, type in the radius that we want, so 39.5 divided by two, and then we're gonna go into vertex mode, A, F to fill it, and then shift and D, Z, four, so it goes upwards, and then I can resize it this way. So 37, and then exactly the same process of Control and J, go into edge mode, A, Control and E, and then bridge edge loops. So exactly the same process. I'm not sure it's actually much faster. I'd say it's probably about the same. But either way, both of these are most definitely wrong. Not because they don't work, they definitely do. They're just not the most efficient. And that was commented by Mojo Bob, so good job to him. And that is to actually use an object that will do this for you and that is a cone. Now, what you don't want to forget, which I'd forgotten, bad artisans of all, is that actually a cone isn't a cone, or it's called a cone, but you can create tapered objects with this. So let's just do 256. Let's set our depth to four millimeters as we want, and importantly, we'll notice there are two radiuses. We've got radius one, which is the radius at the base, and radius two, which is the radius at the top, and while we think this is a cone, that is only because the radius is set at zero. So actually I can set this to my 39.5 divided by two, and then the radius at the top, I can set this as my 37 divided by two, and we've got a perfect base. Definitely a more efficient way of doing this. Just as a side note, if you have clicked off an object and you need to re-edit it, you can always just hit F9, and because I haven't done any other actions, you could F9 and come in and change all of this. So say I wanted to do a 32 millimeter base, I can do 32 divided by two, and then change radius two, which is the top, to 29 divided by two, and we've got a smaller base. So a really quick way of creating your perfectly sized bases, you just need to use calipers to measure the different bases, or if you really can't be bothered with this, I've got a pack of bases that are available on the Patreon, if you'd be interested in supporting the channel in a slightly more monetary way. Anyway, I just wanted to show that quickly because I thought it was a really nice example of how there's multiple ways of coming up with the same result in Blender, it's just that some are slightly more efficient than others. And knowing little details like that the cone actually means a tapered object is really cool. One final thing that I will mention if we press F9 again and reduce the vertices to four, this would be awesome for making something like a square base, but the problem is, is that actually the radius here is not correct because you'll notice it does it from vertex to vertex, so that is 40, where if you want a square base, you actually want to do it from here to here. So actually, if you do want to make a square base, you're probably gonna have to go about the ways that I just showed you previously to get that the correct sizing. So it is useful to know the other method as well. And we can see that if I just R and rotate it by 45 and then apply the rotation, we can see that actually in the X and Y, this actually comes out at about 22. So a slight issue there with this working if you want a square base. As always, if you found that video useful, please do hit the like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and as mentioned, the channel does have a Patreon page, so if you're interested in supporting any further, head on over to that link which is in the description. Have a great day, guys.